Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The case I'm going to be looking into today is the death of Kelsey Briggs. This case is a very sad case and it can, it covers a lot of sensitive issues so feel free to avoid this video if you are particularly sensitive with these kinds of cases and just watch a different video completely. You know, it's totally understandable these cases aren't for everyone. And it's very much one of those cases where Kelsey was failed by the system which is just even more tragic. This case was just by Sophie, so thank you for that. I appreciate any sessions you guys have. And of course, if you have any more, please do let me know. And I'd just like to say as well that I will, if you guys ever suggest cases like this, I will do them. But there will be huge gaps between them because these kinds of cases really, really do affect me. And so I'm not gonna do a load of them all at once. Like for my sanity, if nothing else, I'm gonna spread them out. So. Please don't think that I'm ignoring you if you suggested these kinds of cases. It's just that I just can't sometimes. So yeah, I need big gaps in between them. So just thought I'd throw that out there. Kelsey Shelton Smith Briggs was born on the 28th of December in 2002 to parents Ray Dawn Smith and Lance Briggs in Oklahoma in the US. Her parents didn't stay together very long, like literally before she was even born, they were divorced, which is fine, you know, not everything works out and their relationship wasn't working for them. But despite that, they were both very much involved in Kelsey's life. There was question as to paternity in the beginning, like on Kelsey's birth certificate, her, the father wasn't ever put down as Lance. It was, it remained unknown. And so Lance wanted to confirm that if she was his or not. And so he asked for a paternity test, which later came out that it was 99.9% .9 positive that he was very likely to be the father. So, you know, that is when they decided to change her name to from Kelsey Smith to Kelsey Smith Briggs. And Lance adored his little girl. But Ray was the one that actually had custody of her, which it normally is, you know, it normally does go to the mother. Either way, he totally adored her. He would visit her whenever he could, all the time. She spent her time very much split between the two families. So he would have her on like a specific day or something like that. And they spent, she spent a lot of time with each side. So Lance had a, another partner who was called Ashley. And in June of that year, they both got married. Kelsey was at the wedding. She was like this mini little bride and she just looked so adorable. She had this white dress on with this lovely tiara and she was just so sweet. She was actually put into the center of attention, like stealing it away from the actual bride, Ashley and Lance, which of course they didn't mind. Kelsey's grandmother, Kathy Briggs, even said that she didn't just steal the show during the ceremony, but during the reception too. Kelsey was just a typical little girl. She loved to play with her dolls. I believe Cabbage Patch dolls were her favorite. She liked to watch Shrek on TV and just, just do what kids do. She also did this comfort thing where she would like twist her hair around her finger and it helped her to be able to sleep at night. When case Kelsey was just over a year old, she was entered into a baby pageant and that was on the 29th of January in 2004. You know, her parents were just so proud of her and she actually won Miss Personality. So as you can imagine, she was just such a lively and sweet, bright little girl. She was also known to be very independent and obviously that showed and shone through to the judges and that is why she won. The first two years of Kelsey's life was really, really good, like it should be with any child. She was so happy, she was very healthy. She adored her family, they adored her. She had a big family as well. She spent time with both parents. She also spent time with grandparents on both sides. She even spent time with Ashley and Ashley's parents, so like her step grandparents. Everyone absolutely loved having Kelsey around and loved spending time with her. Her life was as, as it should have been. That was until something happened which would turn it all upside down and of course we'll get into that. I guess it was a few unfortunate things that happened that would lead to what happened to Kelsey. The first thing being that in September of 2004, Lance was actually called in to join the army. He was called into active duty where he would eventually serve in Iraq. 
Because he was no longer going to be there, and obviously Kathy still really wanted to see Kelsey, like she spent a lot of time with her and she didn't want Lance being away, enable her to not be able to see her granddaughter, she actually went to court to make sure that she could still see her. The next month in October, Ray is in this bar and she meets this man. And this man is called Michael Lee Porter. Now, the pair hit off straight away. They get on like house on fire and it doesn't take long before the pair are actually dating. This is where the downward spiral begins. This is where Kelsey's happy, healthy life changed forever. Before January of 2005, there had been no signs of abuse with Kelsey whatsoever. No reports to the authorities. There was nothing noticed by family members or anything like that. There was just nothing. She even had like daycare that she went to, you know, none of the staff noticed anything, nothing was amiss. But then, on the 17th of January in 2005, Oklahoma's Department of Human Services receives their first report of abuse. Whilst in Ray's care, Ray's and Michael's care, she ended up in hospital with a broken clavicle, along with all of these cuts and bruises. And to look at, it looked like she had been beaten with an object or something along those lines. Despite that, Ray simply claimed that she had fallen out of a crib onto a slide and that was in fact how she broke her clavicle. She claimed that she hadn't seen these bruises at all. The thing was though, these bruises were at various different stages of healing, meaning that some of them were old, some of them were new, and she's there saying that she hasn't seen them. They were apparently on her face, on her body. She had abrasions on her neck and her bottom and Ray's trying to claim that she didn't see them. I don't know. Uh, what? Despite all of that, Kelsey was allowed home with her mother. The Department of Human Services began investigating abuse. It is referred to as DHS, so I'm gonna to refer to it as that, as like a shortened version of it. So DHS was also informed that Ray had a new boyfriend, which is when all of this began, when he came into the picture. The family would go through a lot of legal proceedings throughout this entire case. And on the 24th January in 2005, Cassie, Kathy Briggs actually got legal guardianship of Kelsey. By the February, Ray actually admitted to smacking Kelsey with the diaper on, but still, you know, denied seeing ever seeing any bruises. She refused to admit anything about the break to her clavicle. And because of all the conflicting information, the DHS did eventually go and confirm abuse against Ray. So basically they're saying that it was likely that she had actually done this to Kelsey. Or Michael had done this to Kelsey. It was done whilst in her care. So that has now been confirmed. Kelsey is in Kathy's care. And on the 11th of February, Ray is given supervised visits with Kelsey. I believe it was like one day a week plus every weekend. This happens for a few weeks and then a month later she is, it's upgraded to unsupervised visits only on the terms of Michael Potter not being in the vicinity of Kelsey whatsoever. So they put in that term in, he cannot be around her because they believe probably that he is the one doing the abuse. Which obviously at this point they're not watching her. So who is there to affirmate that that actually happens? Like nobody is watching them so who's to say that michael isn't there when kelsey's there that she he probably was he was a boyfriend he he's not going to go out every time she needs to visit a kid is he so you know there was no ever real evidence that he wasn't there while she was there 13 days later whilst in her mother's care kelsey comes home with a bruise on her knee along with this closed head injury obviously that could have just been a fall a bruise on her knee makes it seem like maybe she's fallen over and maybe hit her head or it could be abuse it could be that they have tried making it look like that i really don't understand why they had changed it to unsupervised visits so quickly because as soon as they did that she's coming back injured again again it could have been accidental but going off the rest of the case and you will see you know it's likely that it wasn't on the 4th of april lance came back for a final visit with his family before he was gonna be deployed in iraq kelsey that morning had a class at gym gymnastics which she had gone to and then she went to the airport to meet with her dad and obviously he adored his little girl he spent tons of time with her they made these beautiful lovely memories there's loads of pictures of them and he just spent as much time as he could with the little girl that he absolutely adored until the 11th of April when he was due to be sent out again. Little did anyone know that this would be the last time that Lance would ever see his little girl again. Which is obviously heartbreaking. So Lance is gone. He's out of the picture. He can no longer vindicate for his little girl. He, I don't know whether he knew what was going on, whether Kathy was telling him or what, whether he tried to get leave and couldn't from the army. I do not know the ins and outs of that how much he was aware of what will go on. 
I do not know. But he's over there and that kind of pulls out one of the major factors in Kelsey's case who could have potentially saved her. Obviously, he didn't know that at the time. Nobody knew that at the time, but that's what we know now. A week after Lance had left, Michael and Ray get married. And guess who's at the wedding? Yeah, Kelsey, who's not supposed to be spending any time with Michael whatsoever. Yeah, she's there, even though it was ordered that she was not to be anywhere near this man. At this point, it's just really frustrating. Michael had two other kids, so on that day, not only did she gain a stepfather, she gained stepbrother and sister all in one day. By the end of April, Kelsey had injured both of her legs. Rain said that it was at the zoo and that she had twisted her ankle. It was a little bit worse than that though. It was later found out that actually she had broken both of her legs. Both of her shins had been snapped. So yeah, a little bit worse than a twisted ankle, eh? Kelsey was put into what she called her socks, which I found so adorable. They were full leg casts. So this little girl is now in two full leg casts and she's calling them her socks. How cute is that? And she didn't let it stop her. She's trying to run around with these blooming big casts on and she's playing on swings and just still the happy, lively Kelsey that everyone knew and loved. She just still wanted to go out, play, enjoy herself and just be happy. By the beginning of May of 2005, Kate Kathy decided to take Kelsey for a second diagnosis of her broken shins. She saw four doctors who had combined 90 years experience and they concluded that the breaks were due to abuse. She had two tip fib fractures, both at different stages of healing, so they weren't even done at the same time. Dr. J. Andy Sullivan said that there would have had to have been a large amount of force put on her legs to cause such injuries. Two days later, Kelsey, who was too bearing in mind, had an interview in which she was asked if someone had hurt her. She nodded yes, but wouldn't say who'd done it. The worker said that when she was asked about who had hurt her legs, she would pucker up her lips and have this really sad look on her face. Now, you could think that she didn't know what they were asking her since she was so young, but she confirmed this when they questioned, you know, do you know what being hurt means? And she nodded and pointed to her cast. Kelsey was then taken out of Kathy's care because the DHS couldn't say for sure where she was when her legs were broken. Was she at Kathy's house or was she at her mum's house? Obviously, we know that she was at her mum's, but they didn't at the time. She was then taken into DHS custody and then very quickly was placed in Gayla Smith's care, which is her other grandmother on like her mum's side. She was allowed supervised visits and on one occasion when Ray was visiting her, she actually told her that daddy Mike hurt my head. Well, Ray just laughed it off and said that, you know, he copped couldn't have possibly hurt her head because he wasn't even around when Kelsey was there. Well, we all know they was. Now we're into June and Kathy is allowed to visit her granddaughter. And this is when Kelsey goes ahead and tells her, Daddy Mike hurt my legs. Personally for me with this case, I just can't understand how the DHS wasn't like helping them out. Like they could have just pulled her out with her and just got her out away from that family, away from the abuse and they just didn't. And I get they had an order to not let her be with Michael but that was getting broken all the time and they just didn't seem to do anything about it. He wasn't supposed to be seeing her but he still was. Even a social worker admitted that month that she knew Michael was in the home and Kelsey was and she just did nothing about it. She literally knew and nothing was done. This little girl was just failed on so many levels and from there on it does get a whole lot worse. According to Judge Craig K, they didn't actually know who was abusing Kelsey and so they gave her back to the care of Ray and Michael. They also then suspended visits with her grandparents. DHS suggested that Kelsey should be phased in with living with, you know, her mother and her stepfather. And Judge K just said that Kelsey would be returned immediately and a social worker was supposed to visit every week. On the 2nd of August, there was a report that was submitted that Kelsey had been injuring herself and she had been having night terrors. Mid-August, Ashley was allowed unsupervised visits with Kelsey and I believe she had her for around about five hours. A visit to her son, home by a social worker noted br this bruising on her cheek. And then later on at night, she was said that she was involved in a car accident for which it took her mother to wait three days to seek medical attention for that. So she's literally, her mom and Kelsey are involved in this car accident and she waits three days to take us to the hospital. After this, a critical incident report was sent in saying that Kelsey was refusing food, she was refusing to eat and she was rapidly losing weight. The workers, who went to see Kelsey all of the time, 
had more than enough reason to remove her from that household, but they just chose not to. Why, you may ask? That's an answer I cannot give. On the 27th of August in 2005, her grandparents were able to see her. This would be their final time. They noticed straight away that this wasn't the happy, cheerful little girl that they were used to seeing. The light in her had just gone. They watched as she was on the swing, which was something she absolutely adored, and she just stirred off distant. She wasn't herself at all. Kathy remembers saying as she was leaving that day, Kelsey, I need you to know that I love you, and I will see you again. On the 2nd of September, there was a re report made to request unsupervised visits between Ashley and Kelsey would be stopped and that she remained in one household because suddenly she'd been started having these seizures and if she was in one household and had that stability, then she could be monitored for it. So she stayed in with Michael and Ray and they would do horrific things to her, or at least Michael would. When he was left alone, he would do things like tape her eyes and her mouth shut with duct tape and she would often vomit when left alone with him. I don't know whether that was through something he did or whether it was through sheer fear of him because she was terrified of him. I don't know. And he often wouldn't even watch her because on one occasion she's out there on the street on her own. She'd wandered outside. She had enough time to find her way out and she was all alone on the streets. Don't forget all this time her father Lance was in the army. Well, he actually got injured, injured during an accident whilst in Iraq and he was due to come home because of that. The first person that he wanted to see was his beautiful little girl. So he made arrangements for her to meet him at the airport whilst he was coming home. This is where you start to think that finally things for Kelsey might be looking up. Her father that absolutely adores her could fight for her. He could fight for her custody and he could prevent all of this happening, all of this abuse, you know, by taking her away from it all. And you think that, you know, that's going to happen and she's finally going to enjoy the life that she should. One of the most tragic things though, was that she never made it to that airport. On the 11th of October in 2005, at around half 12, a social worker came around the household. They noticed that Kelsey seemed a lot paler. She had this small purple bruise and a plaster on one of her fingers. So the workers there for about an hour, they get up to leave around about half one. And before they go, they tell Ray that Lance is coming home and that he will have visitation rights for Kelsey. This made Ray really, really angry, like really, really mad. And she comes out with the remark that it's not fair. And she's going on about how unfair it all was. As soon as that social worker left at about half one, Michael began beating Kelsey, severely beating her. At 4.45 p.m. when Kelsey was supposed to be starting her new life, you think it's a new beginning for her. You know, she's going to get out of this life. Her loving father is going to save her. Well, that unfortunately never happened because her life was actually ended. After 10 months of abuse, Kelsey was pronounced dead at the age of two years and nine months old. Her cause of death was determined to be non-accidental blunt force trauma to her stomach. She also had blunt force trauma to her genital area and her little body was just covered in bruises and scratches and abrasions. One of her ears that were pierced was bleeding, her upper lip was torn, she had a toenail missing and her death was ruled a homicide. As I said, she was failed by the system. Those who were supposed to be there to protect her, those whose job it was to protect her just failed. She had four cases of confirmed abuse. Those in January and then the broken legs in April, they were confirmed cases that she was being abused and they still kept sending her back until eventually her body could no longer take the abuse anymore and her mother and stepfather essentially beat her to death. The blow to her stomach was thought to either have been from a really strong punch to her stomach or a kick to her stomach. After Kelsey's Briggs death there was a new law created and it was named after her. It's called Kelsey's Law and it helps to protect children. Those children like Kelsey who weren't getting the help that they need. Well, hopefully now they can. 28th April was also known as Kelsey Briggs Day. It's not really fully known who truly murdered Kelsey that day. If I ever kicking or punching her in stomach. Whether it was Ray, her own mother, or whether it was Michael. Or even whether it was a joint effort. But they were the only ones home that day. And of course, they blame each other for it. He did it, she did it. A lot of garbage. On the 18th of July 2007, Radon Smith was sentenced to 27 years in prison. In February of 2007, Michael Lee Porter pled guilty and was sentenced to 30 years in prison for enabling child abuse. I believe Ray was also denied an appeal request. My heart truly breaks in these cases. It is so gut-wrenching when something like this happens to an innocent little child. Like, they're helpless. They can't do anything 
to save themselves like I know all cases are tragic don't get me wrong obviously they are and some adults can't fight back at things but you just feel like they have more of a chance children have no chance they literally have no chance to fight back how could Kelsey have prevented anything that happened to her and I know adults can't as well but just child cases are just so much worse just because I don't know they just for me at least they are and that is why I try not to do too many because they really do affect me. Kelsey was two years old. She couldn't defend herself. She was an innocent little girl that her father went off to war. Her mother got a new boyfriend and he started to abuse her. And the system that's there to protect her failed her. And she ended up losing her life. And it's just so heartbreaking. But yeah, that is the end of the case. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for some more content. Anyway guys, that's all I have today on the case of Kelsey Briggs. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.